Ako po si Tene Rose de Andante. At ako naman si Michael Davantes. At ito ang MMTV. Kumusta po mga kababayan? Naway nasa mabuti po kayong kalagayan. At Tenny, last week ay na-cover natin yung Taste of Manila kung saan ay na-interview ng ating mga correspondents si Mark Pagkaliwangan at nandun siya to promote his fight. Yes, talagang good news, Michael, dahil ang ating pambato na si Mark nanalo by unanimous decision against dito sa isang Mexican fighter, veteran Mexican fighter actually, na si Lizardo Moreno. Uh, patuloy na undefeated si Mark with eight wins. Ang galing, ano, uh, talagang pride natin iyang si Mark Pagkaliwangan, pride ng Filipino-Canadian uh, community. And speaking of galing, uh, Tenny, narinig mo ba yung tungkol sa uh, Lobox uh, Children Choir? Yes, ang globally recognized na Lobo Children's Choir ay nakuha ang second place under youth category sa 12th China International Chorus Festival o ang ICF. Ang lobok nga pala ay nasa buhol na kung saan ang lugar ng mga batang ito ay naging biktima ng napakalakas na lindo last year na umabot sa 7.2 magnitude. At yan, Tenny, kahit na matinag pa ang lupa at mabuwal pa ang mga tulay, ay hindi talaga masisira ang Filipino spirit at na-prove yan ng mga Lobox Children Choir, yes. ang Filipino resiliency natin. Oo, tama yan, Michael. Talaga nakakabilib to mga batang to. And isa pa sa kinabibiliban natin ngayon ay ang Ramon Magsaysay Awardee na si Mr. Randy Halasan. Ay ang Ramon Magsaysay na tinaguri ang uh, Asia's Nobel Peace Prize, di ba? Oo, tama yan, Michael. Itong si Mr. Randy Halasan, Michael, basing from his history, siya ay 31 years old, talagang napakabata, wow. and galing siya mismo sa Davao City. Kaya nung na-assign daw siya bilang guru dyan sa ama, sa elementary school, dyan sa Pegalongan Elementary School, uh, parang nahirapan siya kung paano niya talaga mafulfill ang kanyang pagiging guru doon. Dahil ikaw ba naman galing sa city and then uh, pupunta ka sa isang lugar na walang yeah. kuryente? Yeah, siyempre, nawala yung convenience ng, na naibibigay ng isang uh, syudad, di ba? Oo, sabi niya nga sa sarili niya, talaga ito ay isang challenge sa kanya na kung uh, titingnan niya, um, uh, nagsimula sila sa isang uh, classrooms and with one teacher. Ang balita ko pa si Randy, nagiging principal na siya, nagiging teacher siya at nagiging janitor mismo ng school. All in one, ha? Yes. Pero not only being a teacher, meron pa siyang ibang na-introduce sa community na yun, di ba? Oo, yung mga livelihood projects, hindi lang talaga siya nag-focus sa education para ma-educate yung mga uh, kababayan dyan sa probinsyang yan, uh, kundi talagang uh, tinuruan niya pang mag-negosyo uh, ang mga uh, residentes. Very creative talaga. So talagang deserving siya sa award, ano? Yung pinaka-memorable na year kay Randy is 2009. Yan ang unang taon na naka, nakakita siya at yung mga residentes ng Toga at nakakaroon ng graduate uh, students. At ang dinig ko last March ay nagkaroon ng unang graduate, college graduate. Yeah. So very, very proud uh, ang award-winning na teacher na ito. Yeah, talagang very proud ako since lalong-lalo na ang mom ko is a retired teacher, nakaka-proud talaga ang mga guro sa Pilipinas. Ayan po, kaya saludo po kami sa lahat ng mga guro. Magbabalik po ang MMTV. Welcome back sa MMTV. At Michael, uh, dumalo sa Montreal ang Philippine Chamber of Commerce at yan nakapanayam ng ating masipag na producer na si Tita Zenny. Bumisita ng dalawang araw sa Montreal ang delegasyon ng Canadian Chamber of Commerce of the Philippines. Sa unang araw ay nakapanayam ko ang tatlong miyembro nito. Ano po ang inyong um, 
Takay na papunta dito sa Canada. Para po magkaroon po ng partner business dito po sa Canada, para po naman uh, sa kagandahan po rin po na maitutulong pa rin po sa mga Pilipino. Kayo po ay nabalitaan kung maganda ang inyong business. Ano po ang nag-udyok sa inyo para magtayo ng sariling negosyo? Uh, una po, laki rin po tayo sa hirap. OFW po rin tayo dati from Middle East and Japan. So noong tayo umipon ng konting pera na nakuha sa pagkatrabaho sa ibang bansa, nag-udyok po sa akin magkaroon ng negosyo dahil nakita ko po ang pagninegosyo ay may magandang kinabukasan. Dahil po uh, sa akin pong palagay, kung po tayo nagtatrabaho palagi sa kumpanya, alam po natin ang kita natin monthly. Pero pagka po tayo nagninegosyo, aba, ay may, meron pong kitang malaki ng palaki ng palaki. Ano pong klase ang negosyo ninyo kung pwede nating malaman? Ah, nagsimula po ako sa pag-supply ng construction supply from light uh, materials to heavy materials po ng construction. Ano po ang sikreto ng inyong success? Kung mabibilang na successful lang inyong business, ano po ang inyong sikreto? Ah, nagsasabi po tayo ng totoo sa customer. Pag sinabi po natin darating materials do sa araw na yon darating po. At pag sinabi natin ang presyong ito ay hindi magbabago po ilang buwan kailangan po matupad. Balitaan ko na ikaw ay nagmula sa mahirap na kalagayan at ngayon ay successful ka na. Pwede mo sabihin sa ating mga viewers kung ano ang ginawa mong business? Actually, nung mga around 21 years old pa lang ako, um, I started as an ordinary clerk. Nagtabaho pa nga ako as portera sa isang cinema at naging cashier ako ng isang fast food chain. And then, nung naging... Um, Uh, naging um, clerk ako, doon ko nalaman kung paano pala gawin yung business. Then after that, I became a manager of different companies until na master ko yung craft ko. So I decided to open my own company without any capitalization. Pero ano lang talaga, it's hard work and determination. Saan lugar ang inyong business? Um, actually, um, right now, our office is um, has 14 branches all over the Philippines plus I was able to spread my wings in the Gulf and Asia. I have offices in United Arab Emirates. We have in Kuwait, Malaysia, Singapore, and hopefully I'll be opening three more offices this year. Qatar, Saudi Arabia, New Zealand, and I really want to open one here in Canada. Okay, what is the main business if people want to know what it is? Can you explain in a brief way what is it all about, the business you're doing? It is actually my passion to help Filipinos go out of the Philippines for a better life. And it may be under a working visa for my other business, which is AMAX or Pinoy Care, migrating to Canada, Australia, or New Zealand. Before this college, um, it's a test the program in the Philippines, which means vocational courses. So we have our welding classes, we have our hotel and restaurant classes, We have our practical nursing classes back home Philippines and it's in Masbate, province of Masbate. Tubong Masbate po kami, ma'am. So um, we are here to have um, a linking of the on-the-job training of our students coming from the Philippines here in Canada, big on-the-job training so that they have a full experience of how the Canadian way is doing it. So for example, Our hotel program is in, right now they're having their on-the-job training in Singapore with pay. So in that case, same thing, in, um, same thing in Canada. We want also for them to experience how the hotel workers are doing it here so that they have, um, they, they have a full know-how and uh, they're ready of coming over. Sa ikalawang araw naman, ay nakausap ko ang Executive Director na si Cora de la Cruz. As Executive Director, what is your main responsibility? My main responsibility is the, as the Executive Director of uh, the Chamber, I am also the Chief Operating Officer uh, of the uh, Chamber and also managing the whole Secretariat. We do have uh, an office in Branch, uh, uh, office in Cebu, which I also manage, and we'll be opening an office in Davao. We have seen many trade delegations who are coming to Canada. How does your 
uh, delegation differ from the previous ones? The delegations that are coming from the Philippines are basically delegations coming from the different agencies or different organizations. For example, the Philippine Chamber of Commerce and Industry, the DTI, the Department of Trade and Industry, you have Department of Tourism. Ours is different. This is the Canadian Chamber of Commerce outbound trade mission, and this is the first time. Is your chamber funded by the government of Canada and the Philippines? No, it's not. It's not funded by even the Canadian government nor the uh, Philippine government. It's funded basically through membership and through the events that we do for the members at a very, very minimal, of course, uh, cost to defray cost of the venue and all that, but basically from membership. Now, your present delegation, uh, you said it's the first time. Now, how successful is your delegation, according to your opinion? I think uh, given the first and second day, uh, the delegations are quite excited with the, the companies that they do meet. But the success of it, um, I think it will be assessed at the end and also um, uh, the period after that. Uh, it's the follow-up of the initial contacts that they have made. It's um, facilitation of the, the, the uh, companies that they, ha they have met. And I think that's where the chamber can also facilitate. Do you have any plans in the future? Oh, yes, we do. Um, I understand there is a, even for this first trade mission, there are already number of organizations who would like to join that would like to be led by the chamber in coming to Canada. And um, I understand they're even looking for, and, and I do agree, but there's a lot of work that two trade missions a year, uh, and we have identified already um, the sector that, um, that we are going to bring. But again, that depends on um, the climate, let's say next year, they're looking at real estate development or they may be looking at uh, tourism. At ngayon ay kasama natin ang program manager ng MMTV at ang presidente ng newly formed business group na Quebec Council on Philippine-Canada Business and Trade na si Mr. Al Abdon. Kumusta po? Mabuti naman. Good evening, Mr. Abdon. Thank you for having me. Okay, so tell us about your organization. What is your objecti objective and why it's formed? Well, the um, Quebec Council on Philippine-Canada Business and Trade, um, in short, the Business Council, it was formed because um, we feel that there is a need from uh, the Filipino entrepreneurs in Montreal, especially in Quebec, to uh, reach out and seek more information on how to deal with uh, trades, um, business ventures, not only across Canada, but also in the Philippines. Okay. Informing the Business Council it seems like an enormous task yes. for a new organization like yours. Well, it is enormous uh, indeed, because aside from uh, uh, creating paperwork, I mean, uh, applying for paperwork, like the certification for the corporations, the REQ uh, and the CRA um, papers, uh, we have a challenge. The, the most challenge is to inform or to convince the prospective members to join the association. Because as you know, uh, we, we have a membership fee. Yes. And that membership fee goes to the operation of the association itself. Since you mentioned that you have CRA number, do you have bylaws and executive board? Uh, yes, indeed. We have bylaws and we have executive boards. Um, actually, it's not what we call the executive boards, but it's what we call the board of directors. Okay. Mainly members of the business community. That's the ideal Chamber of Commerce um, structures. Okay, are you funded by the government? Uh, unfortunately, not. Uh, the federal and the provincial, both um, governments, doesn't have any uh, uh, provisions on us but um, we're planning to have charitable, charitable organization um, fundraising, okay. uh, which is mainly um, the source of um, income for uh, the association. 
And um, of course, uh, we added some membership and uh, maybe um, some contributions from the um, corporations. You know, we, we can get some sponsors from um, businesses outside uh, Quebec. We have so many Filipino organizations. In fact, I think we have the largest number of Filipino of organizations yes. in Montreal compared to other ethnic communities. I want to know, why do you still have to form this organization and why is it different? Uh, that's a good question, Michael. Well, the uh, Quebec Council is quite unique because first of all, it is an association for business people. It's an association for those who would like to become entrepreneurs, capitalists, and those people who would like to be independent, um, to be um, free from their employers, and those who would like to be someday to be successful in life, um, in Canada especially, and um, into the business world. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Abdon, for introducing us to your wonderful organization. Thank you, Mr. Abdon. Thank you very much for having me. Good luck. Magbabalik po ang MMTV. Nagbabalik po ang MMTV. So Michael, last week, um, uh, nagkaroon ng uh, Grand Finals ng Mysteries of the Philippines at na-feature natin yan to find the best Filipino men to represent the Philippines for the international male pageants. At yan ang isa sa mga goals ng Prime Event Productions Philippines to select the best men in the land. One competition, multiple winners, all of whom to represent the Philippines. So mga kababayan, panoorin po natin ang Grand Finals ng Misters of the Philippines through our Philippine correspondent na si Eileen Jane Cavas. We are here at the Grand Theater at the University of Lucati for the Misters of the Philippines 2014 pageant. In this pageant, 26 na nagagwapuhan at very talented at matatalinong mga lalaki ang naglaban-laban para sa apat na major titles. At yan ay ang mga titles ng Mr. International Philippines, Mr. Model International Philippines, Mr. Global Philippines, and Mr. Tourism International Philippines. Mapapansing talagang pinaghandaan itong Misters of the Philippines 2014 pageant because it was hosted by none other than the actor Carlos Agassi, the radio DJ Chico Garcia, at syempre hindi mawawala ang beauty queen. At yan ay si Miss Philippines Earth 2013, Angelique Claudette de los Reyes. 
In my drive to give back to the country I love, I found a group of people who have the same drive as I do to make a difference and put Philippines on the map of the powerhouse countries by searching the most worthy representative. Nagkaroon din ng beachwear competition or presentation at yan ay designed by none other than Ariel Agasang. Siyempre, hindi mawawala ang special award sa kahit anong pageant. Pero dito sa Misters of the Philippines 2014, talagang kita natin na meron tayong crowd favorite at I think sponsors favorite din siya dahil sa dami ng kanyang awards na inuwi. At yan ay walang iba kundi si Mr. Neil Perez ng Tondo, Manila na isang police. Yes, tama po yun. Siya po ay miyembro ng ating Philippine National Police. At kabilang sa mga awards na inuwi niya ay ang Mr. Unisilver Time, Mr. Multi-Destination Global Link, Best in Swimwear, Mr. Photogenic, Mr. Informatics, at siya rin po ang nanalo sa kanilang fitness challenge. Pero syempre, hindi naman sa kanya napunta ang lahat ng special awards. Meron din pong Mr. Profile Holiday na nakuha ni Mr. QC or Mr. Quezon City na si Mr. Timothy Justin Ancheta at ni Mr. Paumbong Bulacan na si Bernard Pomera. Nandyan din po ang hindi nawawalang Mr. Friendship, the ever filled with smile, Mr. Aklan na si Elvin Tiel. At syempre, nagkaroon din sila ng festival competition. At doon pa lang, kitang-kita ang creativity ng mga taga-Samar. Yes, si Mr. Samar po ang nanalo ng Best in Festival Costume. Nandyan din po ang ating Best in Talent na si Mr. Joseph Doruelo ng Kaloocan. At nandyan din ang Best in Fashion Style na si Mr. Glenn Suba ng San Luis, Pampanga. At pagkatapos nun, inannounce na ang ating Top 15. At sa Top 15 nga, nandyan sila Mr. Tondo, Mr. Kaloocan, Mr. San Luis, Pampanga, Mr. Navotas, Mr. Siki Hor, Mr. Santa Maria Bulacan, Mr. Mabalak at Pampanga, Mr. Filipino Community of the United Kingdom, Mr. Davao del Sur, Mr. Filipino Community of the United States of America, Mr. Cebu, Mr. Aklan, Mr. Sarangani, and Mr. Bokawe Bulacan. Sa gabing ito ay tinanghal na runner-up si Mr. Santa Cruz Manila, Nico de la Cruz. Napunta kay Mr. Philippine Community USA, Judah Cohen, ang titulong Mr. International Philippine. Napanaluna naman ni Mr. Philippine Community UK, Adam Davis, ang 2014 Mr. Model International Philippines. Samantala, ang 2014 Mr. Global Philippines ay ipinagkaloob kay Mr. Kaloocan Joseph Durwello. At natanggap ng crowd favorite na si Mr. Tondo Manila, Neil Perez, ang 2014 Mr. International Philippines title. Ang apat na major title holders ay ipapadala sa ibang bansa upang kumatawan sa Pilipinas. Mr. Tourism International in Panama, Mr. Model International in Punta Cana, Dominican Republic, Mr. Global in Bangkok, Thailand, at ang Mr. International in Seoul, South Korea. Mula sa Maynila, ito si Eileen Jane Cavas para sa MMTV. Thank you so much sa ating Philippine correspondent na si Eileen at sa ating cameraman na si Joman Randaza and Paulo Cruz. Congratulations to all the winners and to Prime Event Productions Philippines for a job well done. Maraming salamat sa pagtangkilik sa aming programa. Napatuloy na naglilingkod sa ating mga kababayan. Muli po tayo magsama-sama dito sa MMTV.